Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's study. It's um, 28th of January. Wow. And this is study number uh, 126. So we're still looking at Daniel chapter 11. And before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful um, for the time that we have this morning to open your word together and to receive light. Uh, We are thankful for the blessings of the past week, and we're thankful for this new week. And we look for the opportunities that you give us uh, to learn of you and to see more of the work that you want to do upon our hearts. And uh, we ask for forgiveness, and we ask for your power and strength and grace in our lives. Please be with us in this study as we seek um, to understand Daniel chapter 11 and its application for our time. So we ask for your presence through thy spirit, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. And um, as I continue to go through a lot of this study on my own, it becomes, there's a lot of interesting things. You know, we did go through Daniel chapter 11 shortly after July 18, 2020. And, um, and, and we had looked at, at this document from Swearingen where he had had the historical applications placed in the text. And, and we followed a similar pattern as him as far as looking at all the different in his book. He, he looks at, you know, different chapters in Daniel and Revelation and gets this background before he goes into Daniel chapter 11. And we did something very similar. Now, we have an advantage over him in that um, we've had uh, a connection not just with the past history in understanding Daniel chapter 11, but also in the present. So we have, have light that he he's not looking for. He's not looking for the book of Daniel to say anything about the present time. He's only looking about, at it for what it says about the past. And and this does help us in our interpretation of of the historical application so it's it's not that we're we're forcing to the historical application uh something to make it so that it fits with our time but it's just it allows us to see things or that would be overlooked otherwise right so um because you know we we can see how these uh, different individuals and these different events relate to, you know, either presidents of the United States in most cases here. And then we also have a perspective regarding mi- the repeat of Millerite history so that we understand that there's a pattern, a pattern and a structure here. And we know at some point, hopefully this week, we can start putting these things on a line. It's just as I keep looking ahead, um, in Daniel chapter 11, it, it helps me see one is the structure of Daniel chapter 11 as it relates to the lines, but also the, the complexity. So there's a lot of complexity that, that isn't noticed. And, and we notice, of course, symbols, the sometimes gematria, sometimes, uh, the Hebrew numbers themselves, uh, relating to spans of time. And so these things are all, all very, very helpful. Even the verse, the verse numbers can be helpful. They can point to something uh, to dates. So we have this, this, this advantage, but it also in some ways can be a disadvantage in that this is a lot of information. And uh, for us to, you know, remember every detail, I don't think I can. Um, but the things that we need to see, I believe that God keeps bringing them to our attention. Okay. So we don't have uh, the present truth application in a lot of these passages. Going back to verse 23, we began placing in the present truth application in red. And and we could see that when we start looking at verse 23 and we have this league, uh, that this is going back. This is repeating over a history that's already been given in the book of Daniel. Um, because it's going to, in verse 22, go all the way up to the cross. Now in verse 23, it goes back. And so we had had 9-11 in the earlier verses, and now we're going back to 9-11. And so we see that there is this theme 
in each of these sections that it's addressing a different aspect. And this one's addressing uh, the results of the league. And so we still have not placed this, as I said, in, in the present truth application. At least we haven't written it in. We've had suggestions and ideas. So I really want to try to take, I know we keep repeating these verses, but we looked ahead because looking ahead gives us some indication of how we should proceed with these verses. And we know that we have this um, uh, even for a time and that this is something that we have to uh, sort of address. What is this referring to in our history? And so we've asked that question. We don't have a specific answer at this point. Now, I need to open up something else here, so just excuse me. Now, this uh, 6256, so we're just going to focus here this even for a time. 6256, uh, this is the 360 years, and it goes from 31 BC to 330 AD. Now, we had two different ways in which this could be addressed. Right. So I, I didn't put the other one in there, which I probably should. Um, so let's do it this way. Or it's going to be, uh, was it 48? What was the, to 313? Yeah. Now, so we don't have here, I'm not going to put it right here in the text, but we're going to have to. So what are the events here? So I'm going to put a footnote. You can can people help me here just to remember exactly what it is we're doing here? So we have, well, we have two different options. Okay, what's that? Well, Swearingen, he, he suggests in the Bible Farsus through the Edict of Milan. Yeah, okay. So we have the Battle of Actium. Did I spell that right? Um, so the Battle of Actium, what, what's the date of that? Uh, 31 BC. What? Yeah, the actual date of the battle. Anybody remember the, the actual date? Okay. It, there's a specific date, which I want to put in there. Oops. So 31 BC. 2nd of September. Thank you. So, so the Battle of Actium is... And uh, do we have a date for the moving of the capital from Rome to Constantinople? I don't think there was anything pinned down. Some suggest February. Some suggest March. Okay. So in that time, no exact date. Some people do suggest exact dates, but okay. Not too sure how. Yeah. How much we can rely on them? Yeah, I know it's it's always a problem. I thought we did have a date that May eleventh, three thirty. It was renamed. Yeah. So it was originally called Nova Roma, and then on the eleventh of May. 3030, it was renamed Constantinople and dedicated to Constantine. So, so I, I think we should use that date, even, you know, even if people, uh, the renaming, what, what, why would the renaming, why would that be important? Are you thinking maybe entering into a covenant? Okay. So, um, yeah, so it's a type of covenant. And, and if we're going from uh, the Battle of Actium, to May 11th, 3.30, it's going to be uh, uh, 131,376 days. So I'm going to just put that in there. Okay. So that's, that's the first period. Then we have another period, which was suggested, and that that is going to be from, it's called... Um, in 48, it, the Battle of um, Farkles or something. What is the, the battle called in 48? Anybody Farsalus. remember? Are you, are you talking about Farsalus? Yeah. How do you spell that? Uh, P-H-A-R-S-A-L-U-S. Um, and that's going to be on uh, August 9th. 9th. Yep, 9th of August. And to the Edict of Milan. Probably have a typo there. Yeah. Finger hits two keys. Edict of Milan. And the date we have for that is a June 13th, 313 AD. Okay. And and we noted that there was this um, 
there was this period of time and I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. So, so that period of time is going to be uh, 13,000 or 131,433. And then we had this little detail when we, we take, um, and there are, um, 125,200 days. Um, so there's 125,200 days uh, between Battle of Actium and the Edict of Milan. Let's see, 125,200 divided by, I guess, how should I put that? Um, just so it has to do with uh, the divisors, right? So this number is... Um, Maybe what I could do is do it this way. Just say it equals 313 times 400. And that gives us that 313 date in, um, for the Edict of Milan, right? So, so it's kind of interesting. Now, what about the 400 itself? In what way? As a symbol, as connected to what we're looking at here. So we have 313, but we also have 400. And does that mean anything? Because 313, we can say, well, that relates to 313 AD when the Edict of Milan is given. Um, so there's some kind of structure here. Uh, but what would the 400 refer to? Is, well, is, okay, Stephen? Well, you had 400 years of reflection. Okay. In a sense, reflection ended at the end of 400 years. Okay. So here, you maybe connect that to the Edict of Milan being an end of reflection. Okay. Yeah, because that, that makes the most sense to me. So we do have a period of the 400 years of affliction in the Bible, and we have uh, this. And so obviously the Edict of Milan is, what is it doing? It's stopping affliction. So it um, has to do uh, with tolerance, I guess, or something like that. I, I can't remember uh, what the language is about. Now, yeah? does, does it make any difference in this when, when we're looking at this battle of Pharsus or Pharsalus to the death of Pompey, we have a period of just about 49 days. Well, it might, might have. So about 49 days? Well, okay. The battle was on August 9th. Yeah. You have 22 days remaining in August, correct? Yeah. And then September 28th, Pompey is assassinated. Okay, so that's 48 inclusive days. Now, they're saying that it's either the 28th or the 29th that the records are inconclusive. Okay. Yeah, so if it was the 29th, that'd be 49 inclusive days. Um, and then, then when we're also looking at the year of 48 B.C., using a different calendar that we've not addressed much called the Discordian calendar. This was the year on the Discordian calendar of 1,119. So we have the same digits as 9-11. Okay. So, um, so this, I mean, I've, I've actually never heard of this calendar. So 1,119. So, um, Okay, so where, why, do, why do you have the Discordian calendar date? Were they using it there? I'm just, I'm looking at, at dates of several different calendars. I mean, this is 48 BC in the Gregorian calendar. And okay. from the founding of Rome, it's the 706th year. Okay, so, so where are you getting that information is what I'm asking. I'm looking, when I look up the dates of 48 BC that would be of interest. They just have in, a, just in Google. In Google. In Wikipedia. Okay. Oh, Wikipedia. They have a box to the right side of the screen that gives 48 BC in, in various calendars. Yeah, because the year one of Discordian is 1166 BC. So it's just not something I'm familiar with. So it's it's just more an era. Okay. So, right, that's what they're trying to say. It's, it's a era. It, um, 
So I'm just looking at the calendar. It has, you know, 31 days for January, 28 for February. Um, how different is it? May, June's the same. I'm trying to figure out. This is just a chart. I'm not sure. It's, it's people who follow Discordianism who use this calendar. Well, I'm going to have to look at that now. Thanks. Well, I'm not trying to add to your study, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, getting back to, to what you're talking about there. I, I don't, I mean, obviously the 48 days can relate to 48 uh, BC, but I, I just don't think that, that that would be relevant, putting the death of Pompey in here in connection with what we have here. I mean, he's, I mean, he's obviously there in that history. But it just doesn't seem to be connected to, from my thinking. So, and, but, you know, I mean, I'll keep it in the back of my mind. So, uh, one of the things we have here, though, we're addressing this, this, this period of time, right? So even for a time. So we know that that's going to be that number, 6256, which symbolizes 360 and also is representing here 360 years. And there are two different periods that are being suggested. And Swearingen says, well, you know, both periods could apply. And, and we're saying that there's evidence for that due to the fact that we have that, that internal connection between the, the, there's four dates. And if we take the two center dates, we have a period of time, uh, that one is it's, it's rounded up to a hundred. Right. So it's, it, I mean, it's, it's a round number, but, you know, to 200. So it's not, it's not just a random number and it has some significant, uh, symbols there. 125, 1252. It has the 252 in there. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's not a typical number. It's not some, something that looks like a random number. And yet it has within it these two divisors, um, 313 and 400, that would represent 313 AD and 400 years of affliction. So it, it ties back to a symbol um, with our structure of prophetic chronology. So so it, it, it has some some validity there just from the symbols. But we haven't we haven't really addressed where this would be in our lives. Now we have used the number in other places. Right. So we have used the number as part of these structures. Now, we found the number when we were looking at um, at the division of Greece. Now, six, two, five, six is a period of 17 years and 47 days. Um, and if you start on uh, November 9th, it will go to um, three out of four times. If you do this, it'll go to December 25th. So it, it has that characteristic that it ties uh, together our lines. So, so if we're going to say that this is applying to our time, I mean, we could just say it represents the 777 structure. Okay. Um, so that there's some relationship there. We also know that if we added the 360 to it, that uh, we could get 6616 and and we have this as part when we had certain years. Well, certain years went from November 9th, 1989 uh, to April 5th, 2030. So that was a, a very profound idea. The years is 8141. So obviously this this number is not going to, uh, you know, if we added like even for a time, you added those together, wouldn't work. But the 17 years and 47 days uh, for the word, uh, times and if we add 360 um you get uh another 360 days so 6616 but we hadn't tried placing that well i mean we hadn't placed it in anywhere else other than we started november 9th 1989 you get this 6616 days goes to december 21st 2007 and then from december 21st 2007 8141 brings you to April 5th, 2030. And that altogether is 14,757 days. So 
So that was a, a very interesting structure from that number. Okay, so those are uh, uh, two of the places we put it. We also placed it, uh, the word times, just on its own from September 11th, 2001 to October 28th, 2018. And, um, and that was relating to a presentation that was done in 2018. So this, or, uh, in 2018, October 28th, that was Jeff's summation of the 391 and a half. And there we had attacked, attached it in those times. So the 1992 attached to the 6256 gave us this, um, uh, to April 10th, 2024, the first day of the first month. And then we had 2,187 day, days from the first day of the first month in 2024 which is coming up, to April 5th, 2030, the first day of the first month. So so that structure we we took as, as interesting. We also had the characteristic that two, uh, 6256 divided by 1991 uh, gives us pi uh, or something very close to pi. The, the, you know, so 3.14, instead of 3.14.1592, it's 3.142139. So, you know, all practical purposes, 3.144 just works fine for pi. Okay, so um, whether we want to attach that to 911 and to bring it again to there, I don't know if that's that's a possibility. Uh, we could also just... If we're going to take even for a time, uh, we're going to have um, 5704 plus 6256. And that's going to give us 11,960 days. So 11,960, uh, what would that, what would that mean? So we're going to add another footnote here, but. Anything interesting about 11,960? I mean, well, you have the, uh, the lunar solar cycle plus an hour, 60, 60 days is things like, uh, 1,440 hours. So maybe like a symbol of 144,000. Okay. Okay. So, um, 60 days is how many hours? It's, uh, 1,440. Which is it, which is a symbol for a day, right? Because there's 1,440 minutes. That that's interesting. I mean, yeah, it, it's obvious now that I think about it, but I wasn't I wasn't thinking that way. Okay, so so this is going to represent uh, symbols of time in our time. Okay, so we have we have. Um, so I'm going to write a footnote here, try to explain it. So. Um, We'll do it this way. So we know 11,900 is uh, 32 years and seven months. So this would be 32 years and nine months, right? So it's two months over that lunar cycle that we have. That's where the lunar cycle, where the Islamic calendar and uh, the Julian calendar align. Now, I mean, this is almost exactly two, two lunar months. Um, so I'm just going to try to do this here. So, so what we have is if we take 11,960 days and divide it by 29.530587. So oops, we're going to get up because the Islamic calendar um, so we have 391 months on our calendar in 11,900 days, and the Islamic calendar has 403 months. So obviously this is going to be 405 lunar months. Okay, that makes sense to people because we're just adding uh, 60 days, and it's really, um, you know, it's 11,900 days and 1,100 and 90 minutes, right? Which is like 20 some hours or whatever. Um, 
So anyway, so the, so the difference, so it's exact within um, about two hours. Yeah, so it's, it's 500 and, uh, or 405 months in about two hours and 40 some minutes, 41 minutes and 40 seconds. So, so that's, that, so that's 4,005 months. So I don't know, I don't know really how to explain it. Um, so we have, um, yeah, I guess what we'll do here is just do what Stephen said first. This is 391 months plus 60 days, which is um, one four four hours, and this is um, 403 lunar months plus two lunar months. And this addresses, uh, says, uh, so this is addresses, um, maybe I should say, like, see the Islamic calendar. I hate having spaces like that. Okay. So, so it relates in some way to chronology in our time. So, um, because remember here, we're, when we're looking at this, these, this verse, this is addressing this league, right? The Jewish Roman League. Okay, 9-11. And it's going to go all the way to this, this even for a time. So it addresses some period of time. And we've, we've gone through different ideas of how to apply this. Now we have Pompey here, right? Uh, he comes up um, and he's going to, so we've discussed this and we still haven't really decided on, she'll become strong with a small people. And so the question is, is this referring to Rome or is this referring to a small people referring to uh, the Jews, right? So we haven't decided on some of these interpretations, even in the historic interpretation of this. But, but in addressing this even for a time and these different periods of time, this definitely is addressing what's going to happen to the Jews due to the fact that they have had this league with the Romans, right? So the Romans are going to deceive them, right? And and then we discussed um, about the fathers and fathers' fathers, right? So the, the view that I have, which is um, that this is referring to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, and then you have the diaspora, um, that follows, right? And the scattering is not among them, the prey, the spoil, and the riches, but he shall scatter the prey, the spoil, and the riches. So that refers to the diaspora. And then he's going to forecast his devices against the strongholds. So we, we have two different interpretations, right? So those are going to lead to this, this understanding of even for a time. So if it's from the strongholds, then the one from uh, the Battle of Actium uh, to, and, and we still need to put the dates in there. I don't know. I didn't put them in there. So we got 48 BC. That again was uh, August 9th. I should put that in there. Oh, no, we put it down in the footnote, didn't we? Okay. Never mind. That's in the footnote. Okay. <clears throat> And, and then we have, of course, we can look at this battle of Pharsalus and to the Edict of Milan. And, and it creates a kind of structure. Now, this type of structure, but because of this period of time in between, does it relate to any structures in our lives? That is, could we take this 6256, um, place it in our line somewhere, and find that it creates some kind of structure in some way. Um, or is there a structure that already exists like that? You don't understand what I'm asking here. So, so we got the destruction of Jerusalem and, and what would we parallel the destruction of Jerusalem with in our history? Um, what, what about the diaspora? 
and uh, he shall cast his for his he shall forecast his devices. Who's going to be doing that in our history? Um, is it against the strongholds from the strongholds or against them? And here we have the city of Rome. We're saying that's where the strongholds are. And then we have even for a time. So any any thoughts or ideas on this? Anybody's got any ideas about this? How else could you state that question? Okay. The question is, we have this structure of these two periods of 360 years. Can we use um, this 6256 as symbolizing that? So that's 17 years and... 47 days, could we use that in a similar way with the 360 years? Would there be two periods of 6,256 days that create a similar structure? That is, we would look for four events, right? Two of them being 6,256 days apart and the other two. And then with some witness between uh, those two dates, that show it's part of a structure, right? That's that's what I'm asking. Now, it, it, it's a hard thing to, to, you know, just out of your mind, just to say, oh, yeah, I know exactly where that would be. But we do already have a 6256 in our structure, right, that we have found. So that 6256 would be from 9-11 to October 28, 2018. And it addresses obviously time, right? Because that's going to be Jeff doing this presentation in Arkansas where he's going to do a summary, right? It's called summary. And that's October 28th, 2018. And um, that's going to be on, on the Sunday. So they, after the camp meeting, that's going to be a week after the camp meeting. He does the summary about the 391 days and, and just sort of what we had learned in that, that period of time. And that's 6,256 days from 9-11. So we're just saying it's it's an important date. So maybe there is some other date that we could put in there, a significant date that has, and remember, it's 17 years and 47 days. So you'd have to think about, well, where would that put us, right? So, you know, if we, for instance, went to about 2030, and we went to April 5th, 2030, which is that first day of the first month date. And we went back six to five, six days. You know, it bring us to February 7th, 2013, February 17th, pardon me, 2013. Doesn't, doesn't bring us to a significant date that I know of, but you know, that's, that's where it brings us to. So, um, so if there was something about February 17th, 2013 in this movement, or whatever, then maybe that would be significant. So it, it is the 17th day of the second month, which is what? 17th day of the second month, wouldn't that be the second Passover? No. Okay. What about uh, the story of Noah? What happens on the 17th day of the second month? The flood, right? So does that have any relevance uh, that's in Genesis 7, verse 11. The 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where the fountains of the great deep broken up, the windows of heaven were opened. Okay, so so as a symbol, we got the 17th day of the second month. But do we have any event that would be marked by that date? Now, the date itself is the 6th of Adar, so it's the 6th day of the 12th month as a symbol of 126 on, on the biblical calendar. So that's another symbol attached to it. But we don't know of any event, at least I don't. I don't know of any event um, in 2013 on February 17th. It's a Sunday. So, so that's something we have to look at still. But we can take uh, this period of time, at least as one of them, right, from 9-11, to um, the summary that Jeff gives on October 28th, 2018. 
And if we count 360 days, it would bring us to October 13th, 2019. So it doesn't, you know, it brings us one year past the date where we counted the 391. So that's kind of interesting. So that is, I'm taking the 6256 and adding the 360 to it to get uh, 6,616 days and counting that from 9-11. It brings us to the anniversary of uh, where I counted the 391 and a half days. So that's kind of interesting because we're addressing the summary of that 360 days later gives us that same symbol. Okay, makes sense? So there's something about that number that it relates to our time setting. Okay, can we say that? Okay, so I'm going to put this as a footnote. Okay, so we got some symbols here. So we're going to have to address these. Um, okay, so we're just going to use the word time by itself equals 17 years and 47 days from 9-11 to October 28, 2018 which is Jeff's summary regarding 391.5 days from October 13th, 2018 to November 9th, 2019. If we add 360, that is six, let me do it this way, six times two times, oops, times two times five times six. It reaches to October 13th, 2019. So we can see the significance of that, right? How we have this relationship of that number, um, this 360 uh, days uh, between his presentation on October 28th. Okay. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Okay. So, and then we did look at, at, at that number reaching back. So when we did that, we took, we took, we reached back from, um, April 5th, 2030. That's just one suggestion. It gave us February 17th, but maybe there's some other place that we would put, um, this span of time that, that would be significant. So I don't, I don't have a good answer for that at this point. We're, for now, we're going to have to think about that. So if we're going to put this in, Pompey, who does he represent? So we're going to go back, look at this. So we have, so it's going to be Pompey who's going to come up against, he's going to come up, enter Judea, Syria. So this is going to be the siege. So this is the siege of Jerusalem. What what would we mark as the siege here in our history? So we have a league. So remember, we got this Jewish league, right? So it goes back to this history. So who is this league between? We say it's 9-11, right? This is a league between the spiritual formation of the Protestants, which comes from the papacy, right? So when we make a league with the Protestants, with this spiritual formation, it's because they're connected to the to this idol worship of the papacy, right? All right. And, and the papacy works deceitfully, and, and it's going to use the league for furthering Roman interests in the eastern regions, right? So... Uh, furthering the interest of papal Rome within Adventism. Well, what if we say that's within this movement? Because when we think about deceitfully in, in our lines, wouldn't this be Parminder? But did Pompey ever take over the Jewish church? Well, he, he conquers um, Jerusalem. I agree. He conquers Jerusalem. But did he overtake the church? In Jerusalem. Well, not really, no. The temple, if you're talking about the temple itself. Correct. Romans don't conquer the temple at that time. That's not going to be till 70 AD. Okay. 
the so, Romans, Romans still don't have a good understanding of how the the church works in Jerusalem. They didn't have a good understanding even when Pilate was there. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm just wondering if Pompey can represent Parmenter. Well, it's possible. I'm also looking that is it that Pompey is representing um, the way in which Rome has infiltrated within the main church itself. Well, that's how we originally were looking at it. Right. So if we if we take this with Pompey, then the he shall come up would would need to be something of our time into about what, 2017? Well, it, yeah, definitely it's something of, in our time in that sort of period. So it's after 9-11. I mean, that we know, right? And because we have the league at 9-11. And now this isn't really going to be well understood um, even within this movement until later, right? I mean, I'm not sure exactly when people figured out this spiritual formation issue. My recollection is it would have been about, I don't know, maybe somebody knows. It was it was it was around 2000, maybe 2013 or 14 or whatever that we even I've started understanding about spiritual formation, but maybe that's just me personally. Maybe people knew about this right from the beginning, but it was the video made by that guy I can't think of his name, where he taught because he'd gone to one of the Adventist seminaries and and ran into that and never finished his ministry because he he couldn't complete the course because it went against his conscience. You know, so the question is, what is this? What is this parallel to the siege of Jerusalem? So, I mean, we know there's this league at 9-11. Is there some event that we could now say, well, this this has been fulfilled, right? And this is going to bring us to a, a diaspora of sorts, right? And, and we can see that that really does sort of happen with with what happens within the movement. Everything is is scattered, right? We have in the movement this scattering of all of the resources of the movement, you know, the prey, of course, that would be the people, the spoil, uh, and the riches. And these would, of course, represent um, basically the truths that end up being scattered within this movement. And then he's going to forecast his devices, either from the strongholds, right, or upon, you know, so that would be from, upon, over, in, as in, or against the strongholds. And now here, this is the city of Rome, where we're going to have it being uh, from the strongholds. If it's uh, against the strongholds, it wouldn't be Rome. And, And the question is, can we have one verse with two different symbols? Where, where the city, the strongholds represents two different, two different strongholds. One, the city of Rome. That is, are both interpretations correct? And we have some witnesses to that in, in these spans of time. So are both true in our history? And we can see that, um, from 9-11 to the summary that Jeff makes. I mean, we're in the midst of that whole time setting issue that comes from Parminder. Um, and, and what I'm doing is, is sort of a counter to what Parminder is proposing. So even though I affirm the date that, that Tess gives, I'm founded on, my understanding is founded on a completely different understanding of the lines and different principles. So I don't believe that we can reject Ellen White's statements on time setting, where Parminder believes that we can, based upon dispensationalism. My argument is quite different. It's simply that we are in a typical line that Parminder had started with his time setting and that, that it, it stands as a witness uh, against that time setting. Right. So that was, that was my whole basis of understanding things. So, so these two things in a sense are, so we have these strongholds of Rome. So we're going to have him forecasting his devices up from the strongholds, but also against the other strongholds, which is God's church. And and that happens within this movement. Even after Parminder is out of the way, 
what he has put in place still continues to plague this movement. That's what we understood in our study of judges. So, so we, we need to find another period of either 6,256 days or 6,616 days that relates to uh, this period from 9-11 to October 28th, 2018. And so, so I, I think it's something that we have to consider if we're going to, you know, get this, this whole puzzle, this, these verses, uh, all structured together. And then in the next verse, we're going to have this battle between the king of the north and the king of the south. So we're addressing some completely different thing outside of the movement. But I'm just saying this is all internal, starting with 9-11. And we definitely can see that what Parminder is promoting is spiritual formation. That's what he's promoting, really, right? What he's promoting is spiritualism. And, you know, the whole idea that uh, there is no Jesuit conspiracy, uh, that this is just some conspiracy theory, when it's the only conspiracy theory that Ellen White actually uh, explicitly states, right? Agreed. Yeah. So, you know, so that to me was a real warning sign. But I, I considered uh, Parminder's dispensationalism. You know, I mean, I considered it uh, quite seriously and was almost deceived by it. But the, the thing that I had was the chronology. And, and so I knew his rejection of the chronology um, and that opened up my eyes that I could see clearly <clears throat> you know, what was happening. Now, a lot of other people were opposed to Parminder more just from the political end of things, right? So it was just that they weren't leftists and they couldn't, you know, stomach it. But they really were of the same spirit as Parminder. Now, what else about Pompey should we, we consider as far as if we're going to say that he represents Parminder? So this is just a suggestion, but I'm going to put it in here. I think a more complete examination of the situation with Pompey and the fact that he was part of the first triumvirate will help mm-hmm. us understand more about the second triumvirate as well and its position within what we're studying. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked a lot at, at Pompey, and um, but here in this context about his... Uh, the siege of Jerusalem, because that's where we're looking at him right now, is in the siege of Jerusalem. So, so if we're going to look at if he shall come up, so when does Parminder come up? Would we mark him from uh, 2012 when he's going to make this prediction? Would we mark him from his ordination? I would suggest the 2012 is a starting point. Okay. Well, we know he's ordained February 27th, 2016. So, so I don't know if that's significant. Uh, he has the rebellion on August 29th, 2019. That's what I mark as Parminder's rebellion. Uh, we know in 2010, he's going to do these presentations on the 2520, I guess starting in late 2009. But uh, so I don't know. It, it, I mean, I don't have a definite date for 2012. I know it's the end of March um, that Jeff is going to address it. So I believe he addresses it 2012 on, what is it? I think it's March 31st that he addresses Parminder's time setting. If I remember correctly, it's either the 31st. March 31st to March 24th. It's the Sabbath there. So I, I know that uh, Tabo, let me think here. I think that's when it is. Tabo, Tabo ended up, you know, I need to find out when. Uh, there's so many dates I can't remember. So I'm going to first run into Tabo back in, in 2012 because he's going to, move in with me, but I don't know if I have that. Oh, yeah, it would be in my messenger. Okay, so okay, so it would take me probably a little bit to find this exact date. Um, well, maybe not. 
Yeah, so he's going to contact me. So it must be actually the end of April, not March. Uh, it's going to be because he contacts me on April 22nd, that is, Roland Temple does, and tells me about uh, Tabo. So he says he's going to move. So so it must be, yeah, it must be the end of April. So anyway, I don't have an exact date uh, for that. But um, so so Parminder is going to do this. Maybe somebody can find out when Parminder did these studies on, uh, you know, that the Sunday Law was going to be in 2014. Maybe somebody has that information. I just don't. So we're going to have this sometime either 2012 or we could mark it as 2017. The siege, however, we want to look at the siege itself. For me personally, it would be when he introduces the time setting, because this is when time comes into the movement. And I shall become strong and numerous with a small people. Now, if we, we took it that way, we would be, if we're going to say it's Parminder. Now, so Parminder has a group, I guess, in Wales. I mean, Stephen probably knows a little bit more about what Parminder was doing, but he's going to end up taking over most of the movement, right? So the idea of becoming numerous with a small people, that would make sense applying to Parminder, right? Stephen, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, he is kind of small. <laughs> Parminder's small? Yeah, well, he is small personally, but he has a study group or something, doesn't he? Is that really where he starts out? All right, say it again. He has a small study group or something in Wales. Is that correct or not? I'm just. Yeah, well, he's in the Manchester house. He has like a study group in 2012. Yeah, yeah. And, and a secret uh, email uh, group which Tab was a part of and I can't be a part of because I'm not special enough. So, yeah, so we have that um, that aspect of it. Uh, and we need to probably look at that a little bit more, the small pe people uh, being a nation, right? And, and we discussed that nation, uh, that it can refer to the Jews, even though, it, you know, it's, it's goy, right? Um, <clears throat> And then he enters peaceably upon the fattest places of the province, right? So maybe there are numerical symbols in there that we could end up tying with these periods. And then he shall do that which his fathers had not done, nor his father's fathers. How would we apply that to... Now, in this case, it's not necessarily Parminder because it's not going to be Pompey, right? It's going to be Rome. But, but we first have Pompey himself. We could say it's Rome. But it's in the person of Pompey, right, that this happens because it's the siege of Jerusalem by Pompey, right? And then we're going to have Titus's destruction of Jerusalem. And we can see then if we're going to, if we're going to take Titus, uh, who's his father and who's his father's 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 father's. So he's going to do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers so that means basically it, it's just the rome never destroyed jerusalem until 70 a.d and then we have to try to understand how that relates to uh what what parminder's movement is doing right and then we have this diaspora which would of course so we, so we have to have some way that we connect this uh to july 18 2020 so i'm not sure exactly what we would do or to our lines so if we go so i'm not sure where we would uh, place this so we know if we go to uh december 25th 2021 and we count back uh six two five six days we're going to come uh, to november 9th 2004 and that that's an inclusive count so so we connect November 9th, 2004, but is November 9th, 2004 significant? What, what can we say about November 9th, 2004? Is it midway between November 9th, 1989 and November 9th, 2019? 
I would think so. It is, right? So I think that what we, because we have the 6256, we can count from November 9th, 1989. And it's going to, or, or, Pardon me. Yeah, November 9th, 9th. No, we're going to count it from September 11th. Pardon me. And that's going to bring us to October uh, 28th, uh, 2018. But if we count from November 9th, from the center of these November 9ths, right? So it's 15 years, and we count um, the 6256 as an inclusive count. It brings us to December 25th, 2021. So I think that's significant. I think it actually helps us um, with these two periods of the 6256. Okay, so so it's something we, we're going to have to draw out tomorrow because we got about five minutes. So I'll try to draw this out because um, I really want to get this line making sense and then deal with the other lines. So we have some other lines. But to me, this makes sense to apply this to Parminder. Because if we're, if we're going to address uh, this movement, and we know this movement starts at 9-11, that's where we mark that, um, the Sunday law starting, right, this certain aspect of this movement. So zoom into 9-11. And and this would fit with our history. So we can put these uh, various dates together, and then we should be able to see that the, the structure um, fits, that it, uh, it makes sense. Yeah, so I'm going to get this all done. It's all making sense now. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so it's connecting these 1989s. And I'm just seeing how the structure works. Okay, so we got these different periods of six, two, five, six in here. Yeah, so <clears throat> anyway, we're going to have to do that tomorrow. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Because I think we should be able to finish this up tomorrow, get the lines drawn out, and have it clearly uh, making sense. And then that can help us with these other lines. Okay. Okay, well, let's uh, close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful that you've been here in this study this morning, and we pray that you can be with us throughout this day as we contemplate your word, as we go about our daily tasks, that we can keep your presence ever in mind. And we pray for everyone who is searching for truth, that they can understand it, and that they can um, practice it. We pray for your angels' care and protection for each one, for families and loved ones. And we just pray, Lord, that we can be a witness to all around us. Bring us together again to study these things according to thy will is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.